Mildred Hubble, take off that ridiculous mask. And you too. What is the meaning of this? Halloween, Miss Harper. Halloween is not until Friday, Maud Moonshine. And it is no excuse for this pantomime. Whom exactly is that meant to represent? A witch. A, ba a bad witch. There are indeed, Mildred, some rather badly behaved young witches whom I see every day. And there are a few truly wicked witches. They do not, however, have long, pointy green noses. And you would not escape from them by hiding behind the door, Ruby Cherry Tree. It's time you girls stopped acting like five-year-olds and tried to behave more like responsible, grown-up witches. Yes, Miss Harbour. Faces, <laughs> girls. Two more cauldrons are Diwali. For today's practical test, we are going to be making a laughter potion. <laughs> what are you doing with that book, Mildred? All the ingredients you will need, and some you will not, are laid out on your desks. <laughs> you may begin. much ruby cherry tree. We don't want anyone going hysterical. And drink. I feel weird. Me too. Why aren't we laughing, Millie? I hate to tell you more, but I think... Hold on, number three. You appear if that is the right word to use under the circumstances to have made the wrong potion. It is my fault. That I do not doubt. You can both wait outside Miss Cackle's office until you reappear. And then, Mildred Hubble, as you say it was all your fault, you can knock on Miss Cackle's door and explain why I sent you. <laughs> What were you doing, please? What? I just wish you'd think a bit more. I told you my head was empty. I asked you if you were sure. <laughs> Any more? What? You do look funny with just your head showing. <laughs> Not as funny as you. <laughs> you look like a pumpkin. <laughs> you look like a turnip. <laughs> oh, it's wearing off. I'd better go in and see old Cackle. Good luck. Come in. Now then, Mildred Hubble, what brings you to my office this time? She's been in there for ages. Poor Mildred. Here she comes. What happened? What did she say? She said I must be the worst witch in the entire school. Did she shout at you? Worse. She was really nice. But she says if she hears any more bad reports, she doesn't know what she'll do with me. Oh, Millie. 
It was a laugh. You were hilarious. Well, I've made a promise to Miss Cackle, and I mean it. No more acting the fool for me. I can be a lot more serious in the future. Moonlight, starlight, the bogies will be out tonight. Give us a candle, give us a light. If you don't, you'll get a fright. It's punky night tonight. Time to meet for a trick or treat. It's punky night tonight. Punky night, punky night, punky night tonight. Woo! <laughs> <sighs> Well, I like it. I understand it's a traditional chant. Fenella and Griselda will be singing it. They compose the music, you know. That is quite apparent. You see, Punky Night is an old name for Halloween. It may well be, but that's hardly the point. The Halloween presentation is an important occasion. I must ask you, Headmistress, is this the image we want for Cackle's Academy? Well... Vanella and Griselda wailing and gyrating. Is this the sort of thing that is likely to impress the Grand Wizard? Ah! Well, what do you suggest, Miss Hardbroom? I was thinking of something more elegant. Add half a teaspoon of dried scorpion eggs. Stir three times. And sip slowly immediately. Has it worked? Yes, I can hear Mildred. You've actually made a voice changing potion that works. Well done. Thank you. What do you want me to do next, Miss Harbin? Just be quiet until the effect wears off. I'm very glad that you appear to have turned over a new leaf, Mildred, because I have something to tell you all. Something that on the one hand gives me great pleasure and on the other cause for concern. We have been chosen to represent the school in this year's Halloween display. Oh, yes. Yes. A great honour and a grave responsibility. What are we going to do, miss? I thought we might perform a flying broomstick tableau. Oh, no. I know that some of you are not too steady yet on your sticks, but there's no need to worry. The tableau I have chosen is the rescue of the persecuted peasants from the clutches of Baron Overblow. Only one of you, she who takes the part of the legendary Lucy, will actually have to fly. Hands down, hands down at once. I have placed a number of folded papers into this cauldron. The girl who picks the one with the broomstick drawn on it will play the part of Lucy Fairweather. Gather round. Miss? Did I hear a squeak? It's me, Miss. This is what comes of trying to be fair. But, Miss, I However, really... procedures once instituted should not be tampered with. And I am encouraged by the way that Mildred has worked seriously this afternoon without making any silly mistakes. Down to the Great Hall at once to start practicing. There's no time to lose. Arms folded. <laughs> yes, quietly now. One day you'll be able to do that by yourselves. Now, Mildred Broom. And peasants, Dawn, Bryony, Tansy, Daphne, and yes. Ruby, you will stand on the stage. Drusilla. Um, what will we wear, miss? Rags and tatters. We get to do makeup and scars and spots and bad yes, teeth. Yes, later, Ruby. Drusilla, you will play the wicked Baron Overblow. Oh, yes! Who has imprisoned the peasants for not paying their taxes and is about to roast them alive. Can I have a costume? You can have a helmet. And, and a big sword? In a moment, Drusilla. Maud, Ethel and Jadu, you will recite the ballad. Ethel, take these copies of the poem and hand them out. Now, Drusilla. Millie? Don't worry, Maud. I'm really concentrating. Oh, thank goodness for that. Has banana broom. More wobbly than ever. A bit like you. <sighs> Ignore her. Pay attention, girls. We'll start now and practice every day until Halloween. All you have to do, Mildred, is fly in on your broomstick, circle round, swoop down to the poor persecuted peasants and set them free with an unbinding spell. 
Is that too much to ask? I can't wait till tomorrow. The singing, the dancing. Remember last year? Oh. The play you did with the third years? Three encores and the grand wizard... Egbert Hellebore. ...stood up in front of the whole school and said how much he enjoyed it. Mm. it took him half an hour to say so. Well, he does ramble on. Very eloquently. So distinguished. She said it was probably the best Halloween presentation he'd ever seen. Those eyes. And what about your sister Agatha? She only came along to spite me. Calling down curses. Claim the Academy should rightfully be hers. Makes my teeth ache to talk about her. Down rides Baron Overblow into the village square and bids his band of soldiers drive all the peasants there. How did the Baron? Where are the taxes you owe me? Haughtily he demands. One half is mine of everything that grows upon my lands. Our crops have failed. The peasants cry. Our beasts are dying or dead. In that case, snarls the Baron, I'll take half of you instead. No, don't, please, don't! No! <laughs> oh, I don't do it as well as Drusilla. She really means it. <laughs> Millie, your parts are great. We're better than we were. So are you. Hardly. It's Halloween tomorrow and Lucy Fairweather still can't swoop down to save the peasants without falling off her broomstick. You circle round really well. That's because my broom's bent. I'll just end up letting everyone down as usual. You won't. You can't. You've got to save us from bad barren overblow before we all get roasted. You wait. All of a sudden... Everything would just go click. Help! Are you all right? You call that going click? <sighs> Let me see that broomstick. Sorry, Miss Herbram, I was really trying. I could see you were. This damage is from your previous dustbin dive on the first day of term, was it not? Yes, Miss Herbram. It broke in half. More tipped it back together with parcel tape. <laughs> well, we certainly can't have this happening in the tableau tonight, can we? No, Miss Halbrim. They say a bad workman blames his tools, but in this case, I believe, with some justification. Ethel? I seem to remember you have a rather fine broom. Perhaps you could lend it to Mildred. But, Miss Hardbroom, it was a birthday present. It's a Slosinger hazel twig. If anything should happen... Well, if that's how you feel about it, Ethel, then... I don't mean I won't lend it. It needs a bit of servicing, though. I'll just go and fetch it. Thank you, Ethel. This Halloween presentation is very important for all of us, Mildred. Yes, Miss Harbury. Confidence and control, Mildred. That's the secret of success. You have been making a special effort of late, and it has not gone unnoticed. Thank you, Miss Harbroom. And you have no excuses now, so I shall expect perfection from you tonight. Nothing else will do. No, Miss Harbroom. <laughs> It's completely churned up. I can't remember my words or anything. Neither can I. Nor me. The whole school watching. And the Grand Wizard. Don't know what you're making so much fuss about. You've changed your tune. Confidence and control. That's what Miss Harbrim says. Are you really going to let Mildred borrow your best broom? I certainly am. But why? The trouble with you, Drusilla, is you've got no ingenuity. What's that? Making a brilliant plan out of a bad situation. How does a broomstick work? Magic. I know, but how? Give it a tap, order it to hover, tell it what to do. Tell it what to do. Oh, right. We'll soon have Mildred Hubble on the wrong side of hard broom again. Hover. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, Broom. 
This is very important. Now then, you bats, we're all going flying off to a glade in the woods. And after the presentations, there'll be music and dancing. All night. So I won't be back till dawn. Just like you. Ethel's got a broom for you, Mildred. Thank you, Ethel. Not at all. It's very kind of you. It's a beauty. It certainly is. Happy Halloween. Come along, girls. Collect your brooms from the broom shed. Penella and Griselda were very disappointed about not doing their punky night song. Perhaps next year. What's that you've got there, Miss Trill? My new bicycle. You'll never catch me on one of those things. It's all a matter of practice. Which reminds me, Miss Hartbroom, how's the presentation piece? I don't like to make predictions, Miss Cackle, not even on Halloween, but I think we might all be due for a very pleasant surprise. Hey, look at HB. She's got hair. Extreme. She's quite nice like that. She doesn't seem half as frightening. Wait, you girls, hurry up! Is everyone, Miss Cackle? Then we shall set off, straight and true, above the treetop shadows on the moonlit sky, to the celebration! Uh, shall we be seated? <laughs> so, Miss Cackle, what have your girls prepared for us this year? A broomstick tableau, Your Honor, featuring the ballad of Lucy Fairweather. Seems like centuries since I heard that old potboiler. The traditions of the past train the witches of the future, Your Honor. No, quite so. Quite so. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck, Mildred Hubble. Oh, thanks. <laughs> In far off days, this land was ruled by Baron Overblow. From high up in his castle, he looked down on those below. From dawn till dusk, we till the soil. Our lives are a living hell. Pipe down, you scurvy peasants, or you will! Well. What an excellent overblow. She acts the wicked baron as though she was born to it. Jolly good show. <laughs> because they cannot pay their tax, one half of the village the baron takes. Builds a bonfire in his courtyard and binds them fast to wooden stakes. Oh, save us, good witch Lucy. The pitiful peasants cry. The Baron means to burn us alive. Fly to our aid, oh fly. Up and away. Despair now, Baron Overblow. We shall not die tonight. For here comes Lucy Fairweather to save us from our plight. She looks a little wobbly. I charge you, Baron Overblow, to set these people free. How dare you? Who do you think you are to talk this way to me? Incantatus Liberatus, thus I set you free from tyranny and oppression as you were meant to be. Yeah! Very poetic, Miss Hardbroom. Beautiful. We end your honor on a note of serenity and elegance. Ah! Stop playing about, Mildred. 
I can't help it. There's something. Woo! Ah! Ah! Hold on to your broom. Ah! 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 We're so sorry, Your Honour. I'm sure there must be some simple explanation. A disgrace. An absolute disgrace. If your pupils are the witches of the future, Miss Keckle, I shudder to think what that future will be like. <laughs> <laughs> you see how it is. Mumble, mumble, fuss and fumble. What Keckles need for the future is an entirely different kind of witch running the school. And that's what they're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Wait here! <laughs> Straight to bed, girls. No one has to rise before midday. Mildred. Yes, Miss Cackle? We are very disappointed in you. I hope you'll reflect on the damage you've done to the reputation of the school. Miss Hardroom and I will see you in my office first thing this afternoon. Yes, Miss Cackle. you to turn me into a pig, Mildred. Everybody hates you and it serves you right. You! Oh, Tabby. I might have known if it wouldn't let me have broomstick out of kindness. What will they do to me? Even Maud thinks it was my fault. I've never seen H.B. look more furious. It always goes wrong, whatever I do. It'll all be better off without me. Come on, Tabby. We're running away.